want to ask about incels. Are you familiar with incels? Yes. And for those who don't know, it's involuntary celibate. These guys don't want to be celibate, but for whatever reason, they're afraid or they, whatever, they won't get involved with women. What do you say to the incel guys? Well, the incels, I think it's a really sad situation because these are people, these are men who feel that women really don't want them. And then at the same time, I think they have a lot of frustration and anger about it. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that bothers me is a lot of these men do, are, use derogatory terms about themselves, like they call themselves subhuman. Right. They see a society that is treating men. I think what's happened is there's sort of this 2080 rule. It says that 80 20% of men get 80% of the women want 20% of the men. So there's these men up here who get all the women. And then there's a bunch of subsets of men, say 50% that women really don't want. And that's getting more and more true in our society because fewer and fewer men are making as much money. The number one thing women want in a man, according to like the Pew Research studies, is they want a man who has a financially good income and can support a family. Yeah. And a lot of these men can't do that. So now the society is telling them, hey, you're not good enough. And then they tell themselves they're not good enough. I would say to those men, stop thinking of yourselves as subhuman and think of yourselves, like you said, as a human being. And I think all you need is one person who's different. And there are, there, sometimes there are people and you have to keep searching if you really want you know, to be with someone. Yeah. And rather than looking at it in this derogatory way, and the other thing is change your attitude about women. I mean, if you feel like they're all horrible, that's <laughs> unfortunate. But just pray that there's one or two good ones out there and you'll probably you might you might find one. Yes. When you're dating, should men and women have sex before marriage? Um, you know, I'm a libertarian. So my thing would be, hey, you do what you want to do. <laughs> um, other people feel differently. And, yeah. it, you know, you have to respect that. It's like people who are religious or who feel that that's not right for them. I, you know, it depends on your value system. I notice that men and women who have sex, they become like a, a, a drug. They become emotionally addicted to one another, and mm -hmm. they lose sight of getting to know one another. And if it doesn't work out, you're able to walk away from it without mm -hmm. being so emotionally traumatized by it. Because mm -hmm. when you have sex, the men become like sex addicts, and women become sex dealers. And it's hard to break up because your mind makes you think, Oh, he or she going to be with another woman, or he's going to be with he going to be with another woman, she's going to be with another man. You start imagining all that. But if you don't have sex before marriage, you won't get into all the what's going to happen. It's not so hard to break up. Well, maybe that would be a reason if you're in a relationship, maybe to get to know the person and get. I think we people don't get to know each other, and I think that's one reason people end up in really bad situations. Yes. They don't, you know, they have sex the first time. Next thing you know, you've got a crazy person on your hands that you didn't know. Yeah. So I would say spend more time getting to know the person, and you know, finding out more about them, and and maybe like you're saying, develop a deeper relationship if that's what you want. I think in our society, sex is freely available to some people, not to everyone. And I think um, I think that people sort of, you know, and, and I don't think it necessarily has to be a, a bad thing. Sex is a natural and normal thing for men and women. And, you know, it, it's normal. And um, I think, though, you don't want to use it as some kind of weapon. And it sounds like that's what you're saying is that sometimes it can be used as, as yes. a weapon. It's so bad, Doctor, that men and women meet at McDonald's. The, the, the woman could be working at McDonald's, the man go in and get some chili fries, and they'll meet, and they'll go over to the kitchen and have sex or in the bathroom, and now they're dating, and it doesn't work out, so they end up wanting to kill each other. It's just everybody and their mama having sex now. It's the first thing they do. It's like smoking pot. They have sex right away, and so they never really get to know each other. Well, again, I guess you're going back to that people see each other as a little bit more disposable. And I think you're right. I think it draws people in. And But again, I think it's more the emotional 
connection yes. too that people are getting upset about. I think people, when our, our society always tells you, you have to find this one perfect person. And then when things don't work out, I think people feel that somehow they're a loser or they're, you know, but I think if you just, if people just tell themselves, you know, okay, it's a situation that didn't work out. But the other thing, going back to how you said you were, grew up, you grew up with parents and people who taught you how to be a fighter, taught you how to yes. deal with problems. Today's nobody teaches anybody how to deal with anything from the government to people's families. Nobody learns how to deal with problems. And I think because we as a society don't understand how to deal when things are really bad and don't understand to do, how to deal with hardship, I think when people get in a relationship and they don't know how to handle a breakup yes. because they've never handled anything that hard. You're right. 